The following program contains explicit support for the War of Independence. If you are a pacifist, Randall may not be right for you. Check with your local Quaker. top story I think we all know my latest book is out baby oh Randall really what's that book called oh funny you should ask dragon slayers oh dragon slayers what's the book about Randall well that's what today's top story is all about it's it's a journey of the soul Dragon Slayers, I Love You Buy my book I'm not saying that it's selfless promotion My staff said to me, you don't want to let this go to your head, Randall <laughs> I said, I'm not going to do that What would ever make you think that I would let this go to my head? Buy my book, Dragon Slayers Your life is not complete without my book, Dragon Slayers How can you live without my new book, Dragon Slayers? I want to grow up and be a dragon slayer. Randall, do you really have a new book? Yes. How long is this bit going to drag on, Randall? It's dragging. I'll do it for the whole show if I want, because it's my show, and I want people to buy my new book, Dragon Slayer, baby. Come on now. Pick up the phone and dial the jam, baby. Don't you want to be a dragon slayer? Proclaiming the truth in the highways and byways of the world. Fighting for justice in the dark alleys of politics. Raising the voice of resistance to a fevered pitch. The host who has no equal. He uses sweet and low. Randall Terry! Well, it's official. I have in fact been nominated for an Academy Award for Best Screenplay of a Movie based upon my new book, Dragon Slayers. Oh, what's this? Yes, keep piling them higher and deeper, guys. We actually hired a hand model for this particular episode. I'm going to talk about my book today, just a little. You mean you've got a new book out, Randall? Yes, it's called Dragon Slayers. All right, let's take a quick word from the doctor. We'll be right back. I just got an autographed copy of Dragon Slayers from Randall Terry. Look at this! Look! I'm so excited! I'm more excited than when I received my autographed Spider-Man copy from Stan Lee! Stan Lee! Six thousand nine hundred and seventy-three. Six thousand nine hundred and seventy-four. Hi. You might say, Randall, what are you doing? I'm signing your book. What do you think I'm doing? You do want one, don't you? My brand new book just came out. Yeah, I'm excited. I don't even know how many books I've written. Six, eight, ten. But this is the new one. Lane, can we get a tight shot on? Can we do that? Thank you, Lane. Dragon Slayers, you'll love it. 
6,975. How tall is this stack of books? Oh, oh my goodness. It's Jack. The books are actually entwined in the beanstalk. Get my agent. I am not sharing the platform with some runaway thief. This is an outrage. All right, anyway, let's, let's continue with our discussion. Before I continue with our discussion that we were having in yesterday's episode, easy. Let me make you this spectacular offer. I will send you a copy of Dragon Slayers for a gift of any size. Just pay the shipping and handling. Can you get a tight shot on the signature? Yes, I'm autographing these. 6,976. So anyway, if you want a copy, operators are standing by now. Call that number on your screen, have your credit card ready, or you can go to our website, voiceofresistance.com, order your own copy of Dragon Slayers, pay for shipping and handling, give a gift of any size, and we'll send you the book. By the way, a couple of you could easily give 100 or 500 bucks, because do, do you know what happens? Have you been following what happens? I go on the air, all right? I, I'm just gonna bare my heart for a minute. <clears throat> I go on the air. And I, I know that the economy is in tough shape right now. So we, we offer books, tapes, videos, $4 for shipping and handling, okay? This is, at that, at that price, we lose money. You could probably do that math, right? And I say to people, give a gift of any size. Pay the shipping and handling gift of any size. So someone calls up and says, oh, here's my credit card. Okay, great. How much can we put you down for? Four dollars, yes ma'am, four dollars and one cent. Put a lot of value in that book, I see. <laughs> no, the truth of the matter is, <laughs> the truth of the matter is that we, this is a tough economy right now. And if you are having a tough time, that's why we do this. We actually wanna get good books, DVDs, products in people's hands that alter their soul, help make them a better warrior. But if you are one of those fortunate people that can give $100 or $200 to help with the expenses of the program, as well as the distribution of literature, such as Dragon Slayers. Did I tell you I have a new book out? Anyway, uh, go ahead and give more. All right, let's pick up where we left off yesterday. The scripture says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. When the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. When the righteous are in authority, political authority, the people rejoice. When the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. I, for pretty much my entire adult life, except for maybe a few good years during President Reagan's presidency, I've been mourning, grieving. We have wicked men and women in power, oftentimes in the federal government, in the federal judiciary, various state governments, state judiciaries. And early on, early on, I, I don't, stop waving your hands. I know that we're on a clock. I'm, I'm being profound here. Just one minute. Early on in my Christian life, all right? I graduated from a Bible college. Okay, I have a bachelor's degree in Christian studies, blah, blah, blah. Early on in my Christian life, I thought that getting involved in politics was social gospel. Politics is of the devil. This is the devil's world. We were called simply to evangelize, snatch souls from hell. That's our mission. Our kingdom is not of this world, right? Our citizenship is in heaven. All these little Bible verses plucked out of context and then put into my head so that I thought that getting involved in the governments of this world was at best a distraction and maybe sin. Some of you have heard the same thing preached from pulpits in your area. I'm gonna talk, when I come back from this break, about how that is a crock of drivel. But first, let me sign your book. Go, make the phone call, what are you waiting for? You know you want it, you know you want it. 6,977. Every day in America, over 3,500 babies are torn apart by abortion. Shouldn't all babies like this living unborn child have the right to life? 
Baby killing will only end when Americans see the truth of what abortion does to innocent children. You can help end this Holocaust by showing the truth of abortion in your area with a Face the Truth tour. Go to facethetruthamerica.com to set up a Face the Truth tour in your area. The babies and their mothers will be eternally grateful. In the 1980s, banks introduced designer checks. When my buddy George Johnson inquired at the bank, they had nothing for pro-lifers. So the Johnsons created beautiful pro-life bank checks showing babies with a strong pro-life message. You can speak out for life with every check you write, whether personal or business checks. Be a voice for babies with these pro-life checks. Go to prolifecheckguy.com to see more. That's prolifecheckguy.com. Six thousand nine hundred and seventy-eight. Losing count. Hold on. What's that? You say if you if you cut the stock, Jack will fall. Cut the stock. I don't care if he falls. I don't. I don't care about the liability. That's why we have insurance. Just say it was an accident. Go ahead, cut it. Whoa, 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 whoa. The wind picked him up. That is weird. That is weird. That is weird. Okay, anyway, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna tell you, I'll tell you the end of the matter, and then I'm gonna walk you to it. <clears throat> if you're a pastor, deacon, elder, priest, whoever you are, you lead a Bible study, you teach Sunday school, or you have been the victim of any number of the aforesaid teachers of the Bible, who have poisoned your soul with lies, let me tell you the lie, let me tell you the poison, and then perhaps give you the truth and the antidote. Here's the lie. The God does not want you involved in politics. There it is. I mean, you can, you can dress it up any way you want. You can spiritualize it. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. I want to be like Jesus. It's a lie, okay? It's poison. I'm gonna go a step further. I want you to think of what America, or rather, think of what the world would look like without America in the last 100 years or 200 years. Think about it. Think of the history of the world since 1776. Pretend there's no America. Think of World War I, think of World War II. Think of freedom, liberty, religious liberty, freedom of the press, prosperity, land ownership. This world without America would be a dung heap over the last hundred years, a dung heap. And America is a body politic, e pluribus unum, from many one, okay? We have a Declaration of Independence that gave birth to our nation. We have a Constitution. Now, I'll grant you that the Declaration and the Constitution are being trampled right now. They are. But they're being trampled by wicked men. And if you chart America's demise ethically, spiritually, legally, here is what you will find. In the Christian world, primarily the Protestant world, by the way, you will see a growth of theology that began in the late 1800s and really took root in the early 1900s. I'm not going to name denominational names like Assemblies of God and Foursquare and various Baptist circles. <laughs> I just said some of the things. Anyway, but the theology is that this world is inherently evil. And we're simply called to get to the other side, all right? Now what happened was the fundamentals of the faith were under attack. The inerrancy of the scriptures, the virgin birth of Christ, his sinless life, his atoning death, his bodily resurrection, his coming again in glory to judge the living and the dead. Those are what are called the fundamentals of the faith with some theologians. Can I, can I go back to this camera? All right. The fundamentals were under attack and 
Many Protestant theologians withdrew when Harvard was lost and Yale, Yale was lost, various major universities that used to be bulwarks of defense for the Christian faith were overrun by heretics, all right? So the fundamentalists withdrew and created a fortress, a theological fortress, at the same time as the school of thought that Jesus was coming any minute began to take root in various Protestant denominations, okay? Started with the Millerites, from where we get the Seventh-day Adventists, and then there was a, a woman in Scotland who began to prophesy that Jesus was coming soon. This stuff took root. And the Christian community, the Protestant evangelical Christian community, began to become wildly preoccupied with the second coming. And along with that, this idea that politics were inherently evil began to creep in and take real root. You have to remember that the founders of this republic, okay, the people who signed the Declaration of Independence, with the exception of probably one or two people, Benjamin Franklin for one, they were all Trinitarian Christians. They were devout Christians. The theological weight of the Declaration of Independence shows that they understood the direct connection between Christianity and civil government. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. When the wicked are in authority, the people grieve. But that sense of duty and obligation to the body politic was lost, kind of just faded away on the installment plan, so that by the time you got to the 1950s and 60s and 70s, the big voices in Christianity, Billy Graham, for example, they were not saying we have to go into the body politic. They were saying it's not our deal. Jerry Falwell stuck out like a sore thumb, right? Because he was bucking the, the, the flow of that time. I know I'm over, I've gotta take a break. Let me, let me finish on this camera. The reason that the wicked are in power right now and they're trampling the Constitution and trampling the Declaration of Independence is because we've just left the playing field. And they're winning by our default, okay? Let me, I'll ask you a very simple and personal question. While I sign your book, are you registered to vote? When's the last time you voted? Do you know who your congressman or congresswoman is? Do you know who your local state assemblyman is? Do you even care? Do you know the starting lineup of the Miami Heat? We know more about our sports figures than we do about who is ruling over us and driving our nation into the jaws of hell. All right, I gotta take a break. You, you, just, you just go on about your business watching these commercials while I sign your book and I'll be right back in a minute with more profundity. Do you want to have knowledge, wisdom, discernment? If so, you have to read good books theology, history, books that look at the lives of great men and women. So to help you to become a more effective Christian, a better witness for truth, somebody who can engage in productive conversation that exhorts and edifies those that you speak with, we're going to do something crazy. We're offering you these seven books for a gift of any size. You just pay for the shipping and handling and then give whatever gift that you can and we will send them to you. But just to make it a little bit more crazy, I will send you a second copy of my three books autographed. You can give them as a gift to your pastor or to a family member and help extend truth and justice in the world. This is While Supplies Last. Seven thousand and one. What's that? The giant is climbing down my stack of books to find Jack. No, tell him he's not a, no, don't, don't, don't let him do that. He's doing it anyway. All right, tell him bring the singing harp and we'll call it a deal. Welcome back to the program, friend. All right, listen to me. <clears throat> Jesus is a political figure, right or wrong? He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. And when I say political figure, 
The Bible says the kingdom of this world, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. Psalm 2, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings or the rulers of this world take counsel together saying, let us against the Lord and against his Christ saying, let us break their bands asunder and throw their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens will laugh. The Lord will have them in derision. Read to the end of the psalm. Be wise now, therefore, O you kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Kiss the Lord, lest he be angry. Serve the Lord with fear. The scripture says in Colossians chapter 1 that he, Christ, is the head over all things, all thrones, all dominions, all powers. He's the boss. This is not the devil's world. The scripture says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. The earth is the Lord's. It's not the devil's world. And God wants justice in the public square. Doesn't the Bible say that uh, the kingdoms of, or I'm sorry, uh, in, in Isaiah? Let me take a break. When we come back, I'll quote the Isaiah passage properly. About of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Okay? Don't go away. The reason I'm doing this is because I want you and I to not live in a nation that dies or that becomes a cesspool. And it's happened in history and it's happening now. Think of the world without America. The devil has been targeting this country for ruin because of all the good that has come from America. It's payback. And our Christian communities are drunk with folly. And we're letting the wicked rule. You need to get dragon slayers to get this stuff down deep in your soul. Here, let's go out on this camera. 7,002. It's a good book. Do you want to get America out of the hands of wicked and unjust men and women who are destroying the republic before our eyes and put leadership back into the hands of righteous men and women so that we don't die as a nation? Well, you're talking about social revolution and there are rules in social revolution. We can look at the victorious social revolutions of the past, such as the end of slavery, the end of child labor, women's voting rights, the end of segregation, and so much more, and learn from their victories. Look at their actions, their images, their rhetoric, their sacrifices, and their final fruit. We will send you this series that originally cost $129, seven books for students, one teacher's guide, if you'll give a gift of any size and just pay for shipping and handling. Take advantage of it today. Uh, my hand is killing me. I got writer's cramp. 10,036. Whoa, whoa, he's coming closer. Hello, Mr. Giant. Good to see you. We have no quarrel, sir. I saw Jack drifting away that way. All right, listen to me. All right, I'm going to read to you from the Bible. This here is a holy Bible. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth and forever. That's Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. Christ's establishment of his kingdom, the kingdom of God is among you, the Bible says. So clearly the kingdom of God is unseen, but also the rules of the kingdom of God apply to the kingdoms of this world. That's why the Bible says the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. Jesus said, go into all the world, teaching all nations everything that I've commanded you. Okay? Go and teach them to obey all things I've commanded you. Of course God wants us involved in civil government because some of his commandments involve things like you shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. These are all issues that deal with government. And if you're going to deal with government, you've got to be in government. That means you have to participate. It's not of the devil. It's of God. By the book.
Thank you.